questions tonight over a gun dealer here in D.C. and how well it was operated. This is not your standard gun shop. As investigative reporter Ted Oberg and the News 4 I team found, the area's largest police force ended up being in the firearms business itself. Ted? Yeah, Jim and Ann, it was a surprise to us as well. You know, when a D.C. resident wants a legal handgun, they usually go to a gun store in Virginia, Maryland, find it online. They pay for it and then ship it to a licensed dealer in D.C. That D.C. dealer is the only place that a federal background check is done, and that looks for past convictions or other disqualifications. And for a time, D.C. police was the only one in town doing them, something that's now raising newly uncovered concern. There are only two people in the entire district who can help you get a legal handgun in D.C., and Sean Poland is one of them. I wonder if that needs to be modified. Poland opened D.C. Security Associates in 2021, one of two federal firearms licensees in D.C. We believe in responsible ownership. At a time when D.C. had only one other gun dealer, the Metropolitan Police Department. According to everyone we talked to and federal records we've combed through, D.C. was then and is still now the only police department anywhere in America to sell guns to the public. The only one. And we've got the records to show how it happened. Fearing Second Amendment scrutiny, D.C. Council passed a law in 2012 allowing the city to deal guns if no private business would do it. And that was the case in the spring of 2020 when Mayor Bowser ordered D.C. police to do it. In April 2020, D.C. police started operating as both the dealer and enforcer of gun laws in the district. Police departments are not supposed to be firearms dealers, are they? No, heck no. That was my biggest, my biggest point there. If your firearms branch screws up, you're going to inspect and enforce your own firearms branch? Months later, Poland remembers, D.C. police couldn't wait to get out of the gun business. They asked us to open early by four weeks. Why? They were getting sick and tired of of managing all those firearms they had down there. They had thousands of firearms waiting to be processed. D.C. police wouldn't talk to us about Poland's claim, but we do know now where some of those guns ended up. After a gun is found at a crime scene, the ATF traces it all the way back to the original sale with dealers like Poland, and then follows the trail to see who else may have bought the gun before it was used in a crime. Detectives use the traces to develop suspects. The ATF cracks down on dealers who sell a higher number of guns eventually recovered at crime scenes, forcing them to report more information and participate in what the ATF calls its Demand Letter 2 program. The agency put D.C. police in it after tracking dozens of guns from crime scenes in 2021 alone to MPD gun dealing. We are not anti-gun dealer at Brady. Uh, we are anti-irresponsible gun dealing. The group Brady United Against Gun Violence recently released hundreds of documents related to the program and found it's really rare to be put in it. But we found 14 dealers in the D.C. area, including Poland's and another who currently operate in D.C., and MPD was on the list, too. It was a little bit surprising to see the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department receive a demand letter. But not to Poland. No. Does not surprise one bit. Who says he warned police he didn't think their gun-selling practices were tight enough. I walked in there and it was, it was archaic. The processes, um, the systems they were using um, to, to manage that process is, was archaic. I, I had offered advice, I had offered um, little suggestions. D.C. police wouldn't tell the I-team if it took his advice or answer any questions on camera. A spokesperson only telling us, MPD has never sold guns. MPD was required to operate as an FFL to uphold a constitutional right in the district. During that period, the department facilitated the legal transfer of 8,038 firearms. Gun dealers are gatekeepers. That's their mandate under the federal law. They have that responsibility and that obligation to make sure that every cell is a safe cell. But there's another concern the I-team found, what's called time to crime. The ATF explains, on average, a gun found at a crime scene is 10 years past its first sale. Shorter times, the agency tells us, deserve more scrutiny. And in D.C. police's case, the time to crime was around 20 months, less than two years. Sharp says, even though D.C. police no longer operate as an FFL, the department should want to know why their time to crime was so much shorter and be able to tell D.C. families if their loved one was shot with a gun they helped bring into the district.
MPD is ultimately responsible for the public safety of the residents of, the Was of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Everything that they do should have an eye towards protecting the public safety. Before D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser told D.C. police to get into the gun business, she was criticizing Virginia lawmakers for not overseeing dealers in the Commonwealth strictly enough. We found the letter she sent Virginia legislative leaders in January of 2020, urging them to do more to keep guns legally sold in Virginia from being used in D.C. crimes. Illegal guns originating in Virginia are a key driver of gun crime in D.C., Bowser wrote. Four months later, she signed that mayor's order authorizing D.C.'s police department to become an FFL themselves, and those ATF records show MPD helped sell guns eventually used in crime, too. We reached out to the mayor's office but didn't get a response. A spokesperson for D.C. police did tell us once it stopped being an FFL, the department complied with federal law and sent all their records to the ATF.